I have the pleasure of introducing you to my friend, Reverend Lawrence E. Bergman. This is Reverend Larry. He's a combination 21st century circuit writer and new thought Johnny Appleseed. He plants seeds of truth into fertile minds to nourish the spirit and to promote the development of the kingdom of heaven right here on the earth plane. Reverend Larry is a speaker and teacher who has led seminars and delivered talks from Australia to England. He's been on six continents, especially the New East and the Far East, having broadened his perspective through exposure to other cultures and religions, generating a deeper understanding of early Christianity and its relationship to other religions and its relationship to new thought, which is all thought principles, which he incorporates into his talks and adult education classes. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Larry. Thank you, John. It's an honor and privilege to be here. I'm excited. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. The mind is the most powerful force in the universe. It is the source of all creation. If we go back to Genesis 1, we read, And God said, Let there be light. And there was. Now I'm going to have to ask you this serious question. What language did God speak in? Was it English or Chinese or Russian or perhaps some more ancient language like Aramaic or ancient Hindu or Sumerian? Now, if we really stop to think about that, we realize none of those cultures existed at the beginning when God created the world. Therefore, we might say, what language did God create in? But perhaps the world was not created with words from some language like we might think, but through thought forms. Oh dear, a thought form? Do you mean what I think in my mind is going to become manifest? You got it. <laughs> the creation was a th thought manifestation thinking an idea into manifestation. Oh dear, that sounds much too much like magic. Am I allowed to say open sesame and, and it opens? Well, that's a good question. Or maybe I should say abracadabra. <laughs> now, all the magicians use that funny word and we probably think it's a compilation of letters that mean absolutely nothing. However, in ancient Aramaic, abracadabra means I create as I speak. Oh, that sounds an awful lot like Genesis in creation. And then later in Hebrew, it meant it came to pass as it was spoken. Oh, abracadabra, speaking into manifestation. I like that. I like that indeed. Now let's go a little further into Genesis where it says God created humanity in God's image and likeness. Now for some reason with a mirror in front of me that isn't there, I see you and you and you. You don't look like me. Well, does that mean God lied? And God, when God said, I create you in my image and likeness. Well, if I don't look like you and you don't look like me, it must mean something else that God created us in God's image, not physically, but mentally. Oh, what a difference. What a difference. That means I have all the same qualities and attributes as God. We're many gods. You're a little God. I like to use the analogy that if I have a glass and I go to the edge of the ocean and get a glass of ocean water, that glass is to the ocean as I am to God. I have all the same qualities, all the same characteristics, just difference in magnitude. Now, 
Just as God created the universe, our personal thought energy creates our lives. Oh dear, I hate to think about it. I'm responsible for who I am and where I am. And the hint is, if you don't like where you are, change your thinking, because changing your thinking will change your whole world. Our world is a reflection of our thinking process. We think thoughts into being by putting them in words. In other words, my mind focuses, I force it out, I project, I manifest through my words, words that are spoken, words that are written. Mind is the most powerful energy force in the universe. My mind creates my universe. What we think and do today sets the pattern for what will be in my life tomorrow. Meaning all of our yesterdays have created who we are here and now today. You don't see a person walking into some office, I'm a doctor with no background. You, I think, would probably never go to that doctor. But when you see that list of degrees and the courses taken and the background, oh, I have faith in that because that is a preparation that has been made for who and what this person is today. So I command you, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Our mind creates our world. Thus, changing your thought pattern changes the outcome. You've heard it said, it's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. It doesn't work that way. You have a new thought pattern to create a new world in which to find yourself. Change your thought, change your mind, and the world changes. Clearly, this is not a new concept but one that transcends time and culture. These words of Paul in the first century in his letter to the Romans are just as true and appropriate today as they were then. This is a major truth with a capital T that transcends time, it transcends culture. Universal truths do not change from age to age they are truth with a capital T universally. The renewal of your mind changes the way you think. Changing your thinking changes your life. You find what you expect. This concept is not new in the first century. Let's go back a little bit. How about Job in the 6th century BCE? What I feared most came to pass. Or in Proverbs 23, 7, from about 700 BCE, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, it starts here and is expressed, pushed out. Whatever you think in your heart is what is in your life. Or how about Buddha from the fifth century? It's attributed, what you think you become. Okay, same thing. Or from Confucius, sixth century BCE, first in importance is the will. When one wills what he wishes and wishes what he wills, he will become clear and strong. The man is his will, his desires, should be disciplined. Discipline yourself, express it, push it out. What is in your will and in your heart, you express in who and what you are. Or in unity, we say the same thing. Thoughts held in mind 
produce after their kind. And I want you all to repeat this with me. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Again, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Major, major tenant, excellent thought form. Do it. I command you. <laughs> These thought patterns are in contemporary culture. They're not just from the Bible. They are not just from the great philosophers of the world. How about Bloody Mary from South Pacific? That great Broadway musical. If you don't have a dream, how are you gonna make that dream come true? Or how about from Man of La Mancha, also a Broadway musical? Dream the impossible dream. Or as Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see. Do you do a New Year's resolutions? Aren't you projecting what you want to happen next year? You may not follow through with it all the way through the year, but you are projecting what you want to happen in your heart and soul, press out, express in your life, and it will come to you. The burning bowl we do every year, and then a letter to God. This is a denial and an affirmation. The burning bowl burns the things from last year we no longer want. It's a denial that they exist in my life or that they have significance in my life. My letter to God says, God, this is what I want to accomplish this year. This is my affirmation. This is my heart and my will expressed in my words. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Together, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, and it will be done. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. How does that relate to any of this stuff? Lent commemorates the 40 days that Jesus was in the wilderness, during which time he was transformed from a carpenter's son to an expression of Christ consciousness. How is something like that accomplished? Can you do it? Now remember, Jesus said, all the things I do, you can do, and greater. He had periods of fasting, prayer, and meditation in the wilderness. What is wilderness? Wilderness is a separation from worldliness, from everyday life. Wilderness promotes introspection. It is an opportunity to deepen your faith, to discover one's purpose through prayer, a time of reflection to deepen one's relationship with God. Wilderness represents a loss of direction. It can be physical, it can be mental, it can be both. It can be in nature, out in a forest, or in the desert. Or it can be a time of challenge, the loss of a job, the loss of a personal friend, the loss of a loved one, the loss of direction in life. We all go through periods of wilderness. And Jesus is our way shower and elder brother and showed us what to do. He was in his wilderness. We can be in our wilderness. He went to God. We can go to God. We align with God. We align with spirit. When we face a personal wilderness experience, it is an opportunity, an opportunity for a time for fasting, physical and mental, a time for prayer, a time for reflection, a time for meditation, a time to deepen our relation with God, a time to deepen our faith, a time to renew our purpose in life, Rethink our direction. 
Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Jesus was driven into the wilderness by spirit, not his choice. You may be driven into your wilderness, not by your choice. Jesus faced wild beasts in the wilderness. Now, we have to think, does wild beasts mean the animals that he faced in the wilderness? Or are these the challenges and the ideas in his mind that were the wild beasts that he had to tame? What are the wild beasts in your wilderness? What do you need to resolve? What do you need to test in your wild beasts? We ask ourselves, how can these issues be confronted and resolved, these wild beasts? I suggest the time-honored practice of denials and affirmations aligned with prayer and meditation. Go within to the secret place of the Most High. Align the mind with divine mind. Image. Imagine. Eliminate the old ideas that no longer serve you and your ultimate aim and purpose in life. What you think about, you bring about. Aha. What you think about, you bring about. The mind creates. The mind draws to itself. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Once again, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. It is universal truth with a capital T. We go within to the secret place of the Most High. Listen to the still small voice within. Not the thunder, the clouds, and the storm, but the still, small voice within. And in peace and quiet, you hear. You hear with your mind. You may hear that voice whispering ideas to you. Or you may go into that blank space called meditation and have an idea. And that idea is a little bud. Let it bloom in your mind and express itself in and through you. Still, small voice within. You go within to that secret place of the Most High. Align your mind with divine mind. Image. Imagine. Dream. Dream that impossible dream to become manifest in your life. Eliminate the old ideas that no longer serve you. What we think about, we bring about. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Our thoughts create our reality. When you align with divine wisdom, You want to align with divine wisdom rather than the ego mind because we remember ego, E-G-O, is edging God out. I don't want to edge God out. I want God as part of my life because I am a God, a little bitty God. But I create with my mind. I make it manifest with my mind. I am a human expression of a perfect idea in the mind of God. I am an expression of a perfect idea in God mind. I know whatever I can conceive and I believe I can achieve. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now I want you to take a moment and 
close your eyes and think, how can I transform myself? So if you take a deep breath and relax and let your mind soar into the universe, so far out that you have gone within. Because deep within you, you connect with the universe out there somewhere. And I see in my mind's eye lots of God thoughts, lots of divine ideas. They are mine simply for the grasping. Which of these divine ideas do I choose to bring into my life, to manifest in my life? Take just a moment and dream of these. And I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this time of silence. For in this silence, I am at one with God. Prayer and meditation are forces in the universe. In prayer, I know my oneness with God. But in meditation, I know God's oneness with me. I live and move and have my being in God's ever-present essence. And I say, thank you, God. Amen.